Get the meatball. Thank you. Before we start again, I want to thank everybody again for taking the time. It's a tedious process, but it has to be done. And before you know it will be over, we'll be looking back and <clears throat> happy that we've had these workshops. Mm -hmm. Stop here. I'm on voice recorder. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Missing there. Missing there. Okay. Baseball is a long memory. My apologies. Wow. Yeah. It is six inches. Apologies for the second. Again, welcome to tonight's City Council workshop with the department heads. Um, the clerk, please call the vote. Councilman Thierry? Present. Councilman Figueroa? Present. Councilman Figueroa? Present. Councilman Figueroa? Present. Councilman Zayer? Present. Councilman Rivera? Present. Councilman Solano? Present. Get one more step. Thank you. Please rise for the Please rise for the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a point of order. I feel obliged that I have to uh, complain that we did not receive proper notice, so I complain that the legitimacy of this meeting. Also, uh, 48 not our notice uh, by the state is also a notice of the agenda. So we should have gotten the agenda prior to that time. So I just wanted to go on a record. I've done it in the past for it. I feel obliged that I have to do it again. So Council President, if uh, today we're going to start with Parks, Recreation, and Community Services, which begins on page 18 in your uh, booklet. We have Rob Sarah McCord, the Director of Parks and Rec, who I believe passed out uh, a document to you. Uh, he'll start by go out, going over some of the uh, projects that the department is working on and then jumping into the budget. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, happy to be here talking about what our department does. Um, I think the Parks and Recreation and Community Services Department is all about quality of life for our residents and for our community. I think there's a couple of different areas that we try to target, um, primarily improving health outcomes for residents and as we have our, our new department our new office of health of the city we're being able to work with them a little bit more closely and to kind of pass off some of the duties that were previously under parks and rec and community services to the office of health which is really nice to have that support and that partnership um, but we do still i think find that most of the physical activity uh, programs and opportunities come through our department and uh, with respect to that we're kind of the primary outlet for a lot of the residents. Don't worry so much about the budget that I passed out right now. We're going to get to that in a little bit. I see a lot of you looking distracted. I'll, I'll just side yeah, it. Um, and I was going to ask about the budget. Office of Health, is that under your department now? It is not, no. It's that was, separate. So, so, Tom, that was questioned the other day. Yeah, yeah before, before there was an Office of Health, a lot, yes. of, a lot of the health stuff for the city fell under right. my department. Now that we do, a lot of it falls under them, um, but we still retain yeah. sort of the physical activity component. To get at. And you're going to explain that? Yes, I will. Um, I can get into that right now. So specifically for physical activity, uh, we of course have our YMCA program where we partner. We've got the bus that runs through the city three times a week. Uh, our residents can go and use the Pawtucket Family Y for free three times a week. Uh, we partner with the Boys and Girls Club of Pawtucket as well. They offer free scholarships to teenagers to go and use their facilities to uh, uh, work in their programs, to participate in their programs. We partner with the new uh, or the reemergent Central Falls Youth Soccer Association that provides soccer programming for kids in the city. Uh, obviously, we run our Ralph J. Holden Summer Basketball League. That'll be starting in a few weeks. Uh, that's the only program that anybody in the city has to pay for that the city runs. It's just $10 for kids to participate. They get a full uniform. They get practices and games throughout the summer. I think it's a pretty good deal. It's by far and away the cheapest on offer uh, anywhere in this area. Um, additionally, we run Midnight Basketball League for adults through the summer. That started last year. We'll bring it back this year. Um, we're 
Uh, we also have senior yoga, um, as well as partnering with Sri Yoga to offer yoga in Espanol, Duck at Armory. Again, we provide transportation assistance for those who need that to get there. Um, we obviously are opening up a new Cross Street Fitness Park, hopefully in the next uh, four to six weeks. Um, the work is almost done on that. Uh, we'll be renovating Higginson and looking down the road to increasing opportunities for play by adding an additional athletic field for the city. Um, and then lastly, we this spring started um, with Kirk Hamill, the uh, high school girls soccer coach and PE teacher at Veterans Elementary, a middle school girls soccer program, because we found that a lot of young girls don't have the opportunity to participate in sports without feeling overshadowed or overlooked, and we want to give them a more inclusive opportunity uh, for recreation. Um, so those are just some examples that we do. Uh, Additionally, we try to provide uh, access to other recreational programming and events, um, especially ones that can help combat food insecurity. So our biggest program that we run is the Summer Food Service Program here in Jenks Park. Uh, that's grown in the last three years to serving just over 30 kids a day, to serving just over 600 kids a day. Um, so we're really proud of that growth. Uh, and this year we added an after school program as well that uh, the meal component will be built in for next school year. So we're able to provide two meals a day to kids who may not have access to it. Uh, it's free and open to anybody 19 and under during the summer. And then we'll be providing dinners and a mobile unit throughout the year uh, for any kid that wants a meal. Um, additionally, in terms of combating food insecurity, we are building a new community garden at the Garfield Street Park, uh, working with a partnership with Southside Community Land Trust. That's coming at no cost to the city. Um, they're doing all of the fundraising, all of the construction, all of the staffing. They'll be paying our community members to help manage the guard as well as providing training for them. So it's a, it's a job program as well. Uh, we're also working with a couple of different organizations to bring more farmers markets into the city. I know, uh, I'm sure you know that uh, Central Falls is a bit of a food desert. There's not a whole lot of access to fresh fruits and vegetables in the city. Uh, Price Right is the nearest grocery store, and it's not always the easiest for residents to go out and purchase produce from. So a lot of folks don't get to have the access that I think they deserve to fresh produce. Um, we also work with the Progressive Latino Food Pantry to make sure that families in need or anyone in need uh, has access to food, um, as well as working with the Rhode Island Food Bank for school breaks to bring uh, backpack meals into the city for kids who you know, need a little help on three-day weekends or over winter breaks, spring break, things like that. Um, additionally, for some of the other uh, health programs, we are developing our relationships with the uh, Brown Albert School of Medicine, with the with Memorial Hospital, of course with BivCheck, um, obviously Dr. Fine in a dual role with them and with the city is a great asset for us. Um, so we're really kind of helping to increase access to services and to resources for our community members. We also work with the school-based health center um, to increase access for teenagers who maybe don't have the, the access we would expect coming through their parents and their families um, to make sure that they have resources available to them as well. Um, we also are working on increasing the green space for the city. As you know, uh, Central Falls is the most urban community in Rhode Island. We only have 3% green space, so there are a number of park projects that have just been completed or in the works right now to try and increase that. Um, we're obviously working with the uh, tree warden for the city uh, to plant trees all around the city. Um, Operation Tree Hugger was just completed in April. Uh, they planted a bunch of new trees, and uh, River Island Campgrounds is kind of constantly undergoing a little bit of renovation to make it more accessible and more used by the community. We have a big cleanup plan there for this Saturday with the high school and the Save the Bay that we're really excited about because uh, it'll kick off the summer reservation season. Boy Scout troops are uh, already calling asking about camping reservations. Kayaking groups are asking whether or not they can lead tours from there. And uh, we really do have a wonderful asset in the river that goes around the city and uh, we're trying to find ways to use it a little bit more creatively. And then lastly, um, Central Falls, I think, is a community that lately, and I've only been in the city for a few weird years, uh, but it seems like it suffers a little bit from a lack of community pride or there's a stigma on it from other communities. And so a lot of the events we run in the city are about bringing that pride back, about making the city the comeback city and about making people proud to live here and engage here and to have fun recreational opportunities in the city. Um, so among other things, we run salsa nights, Last Friday of the, month, the summer months, it starts June 30th this year. We're really excited for that. 
uh, Founders Day, Easter in the Park, uh, Central Falls Green Week with Arbor Day and Earth Day, <coughs> National Night Out, the uh, Car Show, which came back last year to Dexter Street for the first time in a few years. They had a huge turnout. Um, and uh, we're obviously still working on trying to bring a community center back to the city uh, to give people a, a, a place to recreate in the city so they don't have to go outside to the Pawtucket Boys and Girls Club and Pawtucket Wire, the Lincoln Wire, the Cumberland Wire. Um, and so kind of establishing that this is a base in Central Falls that people don't have to leave to go pursue what they want out of their life, out of, outside their jobs, you know, have their families have everything they need here inside the city. Great. Council members? Um, so, comparing the the budget in the budget, uh, the line items in the budget to this public events and activities. Yes. Um, I guess side budget or, or roster. Uh, so in total here, you have a, a seventy four and change. K. Yep. Where or from which what line items does it drop? Presumably, public events and activities counts as one. Of this. Yep. 50 grand and miscellaneous elderly program is seven, that's 57. What about the other? You know, so the other 20 grands. Yeah, uh, so uh, the 50K that's in the budget directly correlates with the items that are listed there. Uh, there's an overage of about 20 something thousand. Um, that, yeah, 24,000. Um, that's the amount that uh, both Mayor Diosa and the city as a whole uh, commits to fundraising pretty much every year. Um, to supplement the cost of these events. The, the, the real cost of these events are what you see on paper, and that's, you know, with a, 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 a rather, depending on the event, uh, tempered approach. Um, as I said, depending on the event. But that is what we anticipate um, going heavily for, um, what we anticipate to fundraise or receive grants for uh, to, to be able to do all these events. Can you, can you tell us how much you fundraised in the last, say, two years, just so we can get an idea? Or, or just so we can feel sure about the 24 grant? Sure. We also not reflected in this is the amount of in-kind donations, either in time or materials or services that we get. Um, it's, I think a conservative estimate is probably somewhere between thirty dollars and $40,000 each year um, that are provided for all of our events. And that's the fundraising. Yeah, for, for fundraising, I, I'm not sure I'd have to pull together because it's, we do a lot of fundraising per event. Uh, so we do fundraising for Easter, so I'd have to sort of... Yeah, so this year together. we had probably just shy of about $2,000 worth of candy donated for Easter. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. We'd have to get back to you on a, like a complete list of... Because yeah. it's per event. But you'll know this... The, the fundraising. So you'll notice that uh, I want to provide everybody a kind of a breakdown of the events so that there's more of a concrete understanding of what goes into them and how much certain aspects cost. Um, obviously, the vast majority of the events budget goes into not, I guess, two types of events, into the salsa nights, the assorted salsa nights, and into the car show. Those are also the two most marketable events from the city where we can bring in larger sponsors. Uh, so Navigant, for instance, every year donates $5,000 to cover a range of different events. Um, but things like Salsa Night, we uh, just signed off with Uber that they'll be donating $1,000. Um, and there are other opportunities like that. And that's just, a, frankly, a smaller chunk compared to what the budget is. But there are other opportunities with BibCheck, um, with Blue Cross Blue Shield that we're pursuing where they want to become a, a more prominent sponsor. Yeah. When you mentioned adding um, athletics, fitness to the city, is that the one on Crossway? Or? Yeah, the fitness park, yeah, that's the new park across the mm -hmm. street. Yeah, so there'll be, uh, I think, 16 different pieces of uh, fitness equipment that'll be installed, um, or are being installed right now, um, as well as a brand new playground. Can you know how much that is going to cost the whole project? Uh, I don't know. That, that. has no impact on, on, on this budget. Yeah, so that's uh, CBDG funded, um, and Peter's going to address that when he comes down a little bit later. Well, some of that was CBDG, some of that was DEM money sure. um, for um, small park creation. Um, so it was a combination, but none of that is in this budget. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> um, just one clarification. <coughs> Council members did, uh, didn't uh, realize the uh, the grant writer also, in addition to parks and recreation, in addition um, 
also writes grants for other other uses, other departments. Uh, I think it was just last year or the year before we decided to incorporate it, the grant writer, into your budget. <coughs> just for clarification, council members, uh, the grant writer also writes grants for other departments. So, yeah. Unfortunately <coughs> for us, uh, we've been widely successful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly. Absolutely. I just, you know, that's what uh, yeah. I recall it was yes. put into yes. your yep. department. Uh, hi, but uh, I have seen uh, many of the events you have uh, done through the year, which have been very nice, very fun for the city. Uh, but I got a question for you. Your total increase on your budget this year is $115,727. Mm -hmm. And how much money is that going to inject it into, into the event that we currently have? Uh, yeah, an, an increase of $40,000. $40,000? Yeah. For well, uh, budgeted from the budget. Yeah, mm -hmm. let alone the, the money we plan to raise. So really the budget here reflects what was actually spent last year. Um, and I think uh, the difference in how much we have to fundraise probably isn't long-term tenable, and that's why we had to increase it. I know it's a little bit of a sticker shock, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really that much difference from what happened this past year. That, that kind of helps ease that. So you say that doesn't reflect that that, that amount that's seen here is is not the actual. So so uh, the actual budget change is a forty thousand dollar increase, mm -hmm. but how much is reflected in this budget? It's actually a little bit more. Um, initially, is how much money we spent this past year. Uh, so it's, there's not really that much change from what happened in this past budget year to what we anticipate happening next year. Mm -hmm. um, so much as the kind of budget line is caught up with where the department has uh, evolved to. Yeah. Uh, Rob, thank you. Uh, I got old. Bob, what's our process? How are we handling this? No, just we do go ahead. one question around. We'll do a couple of them back here. <clears throat> Uh, let me first note that uh, do we have any of the material that I asked for at the last meeting? Uh, what was the specific material that you requested? I gave you a whole list of stuff at the last meeting. All right. Capital of the capital program breakdowns, departmental breakdowns. Uh, I Hopefully you were taking notes. Today. I certainly was taking notes. Uh, items were divided between the All the different departments. Between the appropriate departments. Uh, I do have to apologize. I was out Thursday and Friday, uh, sick. Tomorrow, um, Matt's back in, Jackie's back in, etc. We will probably regroup uh, tomorrow and figure out where we are. So, uh, I only request that because we have not had any budget workshops except for the last one. Yes. There was no finance committee that we could have gone over this stuff over the last couple of months. So, uh, let me raise my objections. Uh, usually in the past, I've always had detailed Again, budgets. You have a, we're, we're like to solicit questions at this moment. Correct. Is there something I can address? Back to back to yes, there, yes, there is a variety, but I'm still looking for the information that I requested from the last meeting. Um, your budget has a great deal of questions because it's a, it seems to be a dumping spot in the budget of all different things and which has increased your budget by 115,000, almost 118,000, mm -hmm. which is, seems to be a lot of money in Central Falls. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the line items, uh, let's just start off with the, with the TIAA CREF Parks Recreation. Um, I would take it from the point of view, first of all, that uh, during the receivership, the entire recreation budget was handled by a part-time person. That's my understanding. I wasn't here. That's yeah. right. I understand. Now, uh, it has evolved into something greater. How many full-time and part-time people do you have? Sure. So, uh, this budget calls for myself and one other full-time employee, and then one after-school coordinator part-time, three after-school staff part-time, uh, and then we'll require some, uh, yeah, yeah, some event staff who will be part-time uh, for our larger events, 
uh, at a very, very reduced hours. We hire summer staff as well um, for our summer program. That's entirely funded out of the reimbursements we receive from the state for the, right. the uh, meals that we serve. Then we have two street beautification workers. Um, Are they considered part-time or? Yes, they're also part-time. Yeah, everybody else, myself and the new employee who calls for the recreation coordinator, the only full-time employees in the department. Um, two street beautification workers, currently one park maintenance worker uh, that's seasonal. And ideally, this budget calls for a second one because we're building new parks, and quite frankly, one person can't keep up with all the all that's needed to be done in the parks. Um, and we would prefer not to receive complaints about trash in the parks or graffiti or the lawn not being cut or lines painted for soccer games, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, definitely become more more work than one person can handle, especially part time. Time we'll go one more, and then we'll go to Maria, and then we'll go, uh, we'll go around again. I lost count at eleven or twelve, so. And that's not including the summer workers, so. Sure, anticipated in this budget or what we have currently this past year, what would you like? What are you anticipating? Like, in this budget? This budget's already passed. Four, so. eight, uh, two full-time and eight part-time, plus summer staff. Ten yep. plus summer staff. Yep. And a little bit more than that. Yeah, I, I, I take a second. I don't think. Again, I wasn't here, but my understanding of what the recreation department consisted of during receivership, I don't think it's really a, an appropriate comparison because it's just so radically different what's being provided well, it's, now. It's a comparison because of the money. Sure. We've inflated this budget to reflect 10, 11, uh, full time, part time. Inflated, inflated is a. Yeah. Well, we created the position compared to, to what it was in the past. So to be perfect, I'm still quite understaffed. Go ahead, I'm Maria, go ahead. We'll come back to you, Tom. Okay. The fundraisers that are being held for some of these events, where are they? So they're not, uh, we don't have specific fundraisers uh, so much as we're pursuing sponsorships and uh, occasionally donations with more sponsorship opportunities. I, okay. I don't know that we're entirely envisioning what the mayor's choosing. So the mayor's, uh, I guess, accepted a large role in this, and so I don't know if he's planning on holding fundraisers himself. I can't speak to that. Josh probably can, right. but at least from I, my I think the appropriate venue for, for fundraisers would be correlated around some of the programs that we offer. So the, the, the summer basketball league, mm -hmm. now, now that we are building our capacity, um, because before it was always a one full-time person department, and it's sort of difficult to, to plan those sort of things when there's only one person fo focusing on it. This calls for another person, and I think we may have those opportunities. Uh, but we haven't held any like, specific fundraisers for an event um, or for a specific cause. But I think it's something that, that could come up. More specifically, we kind of, well, we can't, we have to turn down grant opportunities because we don't have the administrative capacity to manage them. Um, so more staff, more investment we get from the city and our staff greatly, like exponentially increases our ability to receive funding from the outside because then we can appropriately use it. So it's really a small fraction of what the, the kind of return on the investment would be. So last year for Salsa Nights, mm -hmm. can you tell me how much was came in from sponsorships? Last year for Salsa Nights, uh, in terms of actual, in terms of actual money, I think it was just a thousand dollars to offset it. Yeah. It was so why isn't so why aren't we advocating for more sponsorship? Because that's a that's a big event, oh, right? Just like the car show, so and I'm sure year, there would be a lot of businesses or companies that would be yes. willing to sponsor this. Yep. So so last year we wanted to get it up off the ground. Um, we weren't we were optimistic, but we weren't even optimistic enough for how successful it was going to be, and it really did take off and went from uh, a little shy of 500 people from the first event to about 1,200 for the last one. Um, and the very final one in September got rained out last year, and I think all indications were it would be even bigger. So yeah, so there, there's a great capacity for sponsorship there. So that is something we're pursuing this year. We, I don't want to speak publicly about it until things are locked in, but we have a couple of uh, let's say interested parties who uh, are, yeah, are interested in a, in a larger dollar amount um, so that we can offset a lot of the cost of running those events. Okay. Yeah. Um, it could be anecdotal or database, mm -hmm. but I, I have questions around the return on investment for 
these events, mm -hmm. but also for our after school program. Um, and so are there any, have you, do we have any information about increased academic outcomes for any kids participating? Are we tracking at all? I'll tell you as a wrestling coach for <laughs> Calcut that it doesn't look promising, at least for my end. Um, and the other piece, you know, the car show costs 20 grand, even if we fundraise for half of it. Yep. You know, one car show still costs us two salsa nights. And we get a lot more, presumably, bang for our buck from multiple events than we do from one. And so how do we justify having these events, sure. but also running a robust after-school program with no results, sir? Sure. So, so there's kind of two related questions. Let me take them at one at a time. Sure. So uh, very specifically, our after-school program is not uh, academic enhancement focus because that is what schools do and there's so much focus I think unfortunately I see the same thing you do where a lot of our students are below grade level um, in a lot of different subjects uh, we are too small of a community and I get very frustrated by the duplication of services that we have um, so one of the areas that our students lack as well especially in schools is opportunities for physical activity so our after school program is targeted very specifically physical activity and food insecurity. So we provide them with a dinner, or we plan to this coming school year, we provide them with structured opportunities for play and recreation and exercise. Um, so we aren't tracking uh, uh, academic performance. However, um, with our summer program, we are working with researchers from Brown, uh, from the Brown School of Medicine this year, this summer. Um, they've already started recruiting where we're doing a study with families and children to see how the summer program combats summer weight gain, um, which is a well-established problem, especially in communities with similar demographics as ours. Uh, we hope to indicate that, uh, <laughs> um, we hope to, to indicate that this program does help kids eat healthier, provide uh, more exercise for them during the summer, and we will have concrete results one way or another, hopefully saying that we're doing a good job at the end of the summer for that. Um, as far as return on investment for the events, uh, I don't, I don't have database responses for that. I do have anecdotal, um, one of which is I, so I'm a resident of Pawtucket. I don't live in Central Falls. I first came to Central Falls because I uh, met people from Pawtucket who were frankly pretty racist about Central Falls and pretty unpleasant about Central Falls, told me I should never go there, should I, told me I should never be there at night, I shouldn't take my wife there under any circumstances, all things that uh, people have said about my hometown that bother me greatly, and I think are incorrect. Um, so I made a point to make sure that I did come to Central Falls. Uh, in the last three years, I've heard people I don't know who don't know that I work for Central Falls talk about salsa and talk about the car show, say, oh, I went to Takari Lupita, or I went to La Casona, who are coming into the city. And I think that's sort of the tangible benefit that we get, is we project, a, for better or worse, an image that this is a safe place, and this is a happy place, this is a place where things are going well for the city that people do want to come in. Um, as far as how business figures, I don't know, generally speaking, if numbers have been up in the past year, I can't speak to that, but there is a, it is anecdotal, it is my experience, but there does seem to be a different kind of vibe around Central Falls outside of the community immediately. Um, there also, I think, is a tangible benefit to, this, this happens or, or goes in park construction a little bit more than it does events but there is a very clear demonstrated value to property owners nearby the parks that we're building where they can expect their property values to rise significantly. Um, and that's something that I think the community as a whole will see a return on the investment that the city is putting forth. So just a small quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. Biggest house tonight, roughly 1,200 people. Yep. Car show, 100 people. About 4,000. Yeah, <laughs> so, so more than two salsa nights. So at least budgetarily, that probably pans out. I echo what uh, Councilwoman Rivera said about this. Uh, I see that um, South and I in car show are the ones that, yep. you know, we need more money for town. Um, I would like to see more like fundraising for these events, if it's possible, because I know this this is all money that's coming from uh, taxpayers. And, sure. Uh, I would like to see if we can do like fundraising for these events. And also for the Progreso Latino Food Pantry, mm -hmm. uh, is there any cost for or something that's from the Rhode Island Food Bank? Uh, so for the Rhode Island Food Bank, 
there's no cost. Mm -hmm. We help them distribute because they don't have a dis distribution center here in Central Falls. Um, and we want to, you know, our families, again, not being from here, I don't quite understand it. But the tough is too far away for folks to go. So we help them distribute in the city. Um, for the food pantry, my understanding is it's no cost, I believe, to everyone. It might just be uh, to those who can't afford it, there's no cost. So it's a little bit of a sliding scale. So we just help Progreso Latino? Yeah, Latino. mostly mostly with uh, advertising and uh, social media connection. And yeah, referrals. and referrals. Yeah. Um, we're trying to uh, develop that a bit more. Um, that's an area that's been growing more slowly than I'd like. Um, there are some outside partners who are very interested in coming to Central Falls. There are some somewhat large barriers to that happening, which since they haven't yet. Um, they're largely space-based, um, but there's some organizations that are doing really good work in other communities in Rhode Island that are low or no cost to families um, that have that are that have expressed a very specific interest in coming to Central Falls. And we're trying to work with the food pantry to bring them on board. Um, but that's still ongoing. Yeah. I just want to clarify something, I guess, more towards what you had said, Tom. First of all, just prior to the bankruptcy, during the bankruptcy, <clears throat> and prior to this administration, part-time recreation director thing wasn't working. Um, all they had, if I recall, was two playgrounds had a federal Food program, uh, the children ate. You didn't see them again. They they went just to uh, for the food program. Uh, there was a Sunday morning men's basketball, uh, excuse me, men's softball league. That was it. Christmas time, nothing. Easter time, nothing. Basketball sponsored by the city, zero. Uh, Little league has since evaporated. Uh, a lot of this reflects. Unfortunately, um, middle school and even high school, uh, although we have had some, some successes, it could be a lot better, but there's no feeder program. But it didn't work. There was absolutely nothing, nothing in this city, just prior to the bankruptcy, during a bankruptcy, and a little bit later prior to this. I just wanted to clarify, there really wasn't, because I spoke to the previous part-time record. My daughter was like five at the time. I said, what do you have for my daughter in the winter? Nothing. There was really nothing. And again, Easter, nothing. Christmas, I'd go on and on, just like that song, no New Year's Day, no Christmas, etc. So I just wanted to reflect, it's working. Trust me. All my life I've been involved in recreation, God knows. And uh, it's working. And uh, it does bear, bear fruit. Unfortunately, yeah, everything's expensive. Everything. Um, as far as the car show, tremendous. The only thing I, I would have done different, uh, Josh, would be I probably would have raised the actual application fee for these vehicles uh, to, to, to we participate. Are, we are this year. Yeah, because yeah. 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 uh, I, I know there's, there's car shows around the state, and, and, and I, I, it's probably a minimum of 25, but these people are happy to do it, especially if, if it's a successful one. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's like night and day right now, recreation. Trust me, it's like night and day. It bothered me for years when I saw what was going on in recreation in this city. As far as basketball, if it wasn't for CYO basketball, we wouldn't have had the successes uh, this city has. And same with baseball. You had literally, you had Dave Ruth, the American Legion. It's not just, I just want to clarify, it just bothers me if somebody says, well, geez, we've got this many people working now, but it's working. Right? Easter time. Come, come out, come out Christmas, come out Easter. Uh, I just had to clarify that. Thank you. Um, but I want to ask a question, and probably, probably it won't be you the one going to answer, but anyway, I want to ask a question about the Office on Health, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then what we're um, doing. Sure. So is it correlated to Parks and Rec? Well, he said it doesn't yeah, 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 sure. but anyway, I want to ask a sure. question, because uh, he was mentioned before that yeah. he hates to see things duplicating. Yes. That was the words you use. So, and then and on the Office of Health, he mentioned things about uh, the wellness, the wellness of the well being yep. of the people of Central Falls, and also he's talking about the tobacco kill yep. And I see two of those, uh, that, the, those things that you mentioned here, 
Al, in the wellness center of Progreso Latino, they yeah. have a wellness center, which is do a lot of things with health, and they also have a, a tobacco yeah. uh, prevention thing. Yep. And, uh, and so I, because I don't know what it's going to be the cost of this, and if we do it separately, instead of doing like, like a partnership with Progreso Latino yeah. to run this program. So, so in addition, I uh, chair the Convention Coalition for Central Falls, um, are one of the co-chairs. Uh, we do work with Progresso Latino with their prevention office a lot as well. Um, all of those activities are funded through $125,000 five-year, so $525,000 grants that we've gotten from the federal government. Um, so that is no cost to the city, but it is still part of my job to help coordinate that, to help enforce that in the parks, to make sure that when we pass a smoking ordinance in parks, to make sure the signs go up in the parks, to help out with any programming, because it's not something that they always have to pass before, to incorporate prevention programming into some of the programs we have. Um, because a lot of the literature indicates if you try and get kids to sign up for a no tobacco program, they're not going to do it. If you get them to sign up for a basketball program, they kind of work that no tobacco part in there, then they're more likely to do that. Um, so that's kind of where my aspect of the partnership comes in. Is that a your question? Mm -hmm. as far as, so as far as the Office of Health goes, again, they aren't necessarily the most experienced with the recreational aspect or the, the getting kids in, so we kind of provide a little bit of a marketing arm to them and some experience in terms of actual programmatic aspects. I, I also mentioned that Parks and Rec has a primary focus on working with our youth. Yeah. Um, as does uh, that grant that you were referring to from Brazil, that we <coughs> let you know we see, uh, that focus on youth prevention. Um, and so a lot of the work that the Office of Health is, the Office on Health is doing, uh, is focusing on adults. Right, so a lot of the work that I had been previously doing, uh, say like AIDS, Ocean State working on um, some of the drug issues that we have in the city, have largely been taken over by the Office of Health, and I'm happy to hand that off to them, because that's not a personal area of expertise, um, so it's nice to have them working with those and making the community a little bit better in that way. Uh, Josh, uh, coming back to your staff, presently you have you have a full time worker. Josh or myself? I mean, excuse me. Uh, yeah. You have a full time worker, and it says you have a part time. You're proposing a full time. Yes. Does that reflect in the budget budget salary as it is yep. now under the thirty under the it does yes, fifty one thousand. So, so that's uh, Tracy Drawn, who's our uh, part-time recreation assistant. Um, okay, is, is uh, on page 22. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll be going full-time. Uh, in all honesty, she's been working full-time since last summer, anyways, uh, and this really and not getting paid for it. And not getting paid for it. Um, so this really just reflects us not doing the right thing by her and making sure the department can continue at the current level it's at. So those of you that know Tracy have seen her at every single event, have probably seen the amount of hours that she puts in before the event, after the event. A lot of that time has been volunteered um, and hasn't been paid for. She's uh, previously, in the, in the previous budget, not, not this one that we're presenting, uh, she was a, uh, a part-time employee. And so now we want to compensate her as a full-time employee and give her those full-time responsibilities. She's clearly demonstrated capacity for it and interest in it. She's CF born and raised, uh, CF high graduate. She's the exact kind of person that should continue working for the city. This community. I can't say enough good things about the work she's done. I have no doubt about uh, uh, the, the hard work that Tracy's doing in, in the city. I've been in this since. She's everywhere doing this out. <laughs> so just to clarify, in 17, she's in the temporary employee salaries line. And like 13 and change that was approved for 17 and then 18 to be a <laughs> the salary line if the budget gets approved she'd be a salary employee and the Could salary you break down budget. what the salary the budget the ordinance is. has that sound the, the headcount ordinance on page 21 21 but, but you um, yeah. that's only the salary could you break down the benefits also like the medical insurance benefit social security medicaid all the other uh, benefits that would accrue to a full-time employee. So if you say a full-time employee is 36000 what is it costing the city for that full-time employee? I would like a breakdown of 
full-time employees, especially any new full-time employees. So, so the majority, uh, if you look at page 18, the majority of the increases are due to Tracy being brought up. You can break that up and show what a full-time, any full-time employees in the budget. More than what's broken up already? Yeah. yeah. I think it's already there. Yeah. Well, then, now, I have no questions about the, about Tracy. It's actually, it's a, I can answer your question. I, I, I'm on the, the separation between Tracy coming on full time and before coming on full time. For Social Security, it's three thousand dollars. For Medicare, it's seven hundred dollars. For the state pension, it's that one's expensive because uh, the the pension is the formulas from the state. That's around five thousand uh, dollars. Medical insurance, she's taking a single plan. Um, that's around. I want to say six or seven thousand, but I have to I'll, I'll double check that. And that's the, that's the that's the fringe impact of coming aboard. It's usually about eighteen percent more than the salary. Now, personally, you're not getting medical coverage. I haven't for my previous time at the city. You know, I've been able to save the city some money by going to my wife's plan. But that uh, doesn't appear to be an option. This medical insurance number includes both of them. Rob as a family and Tracy as a single. Okay, as I said. When I discuss individuals, I discuss the positions. I take no... Uh, uh, I'm not offended, don't worry. I, I don't need any offense to any individual here mm -hmm. in the city, but I'm looking at it at a dollar and cents yes. issue. Your budget, to me, is just has so many questions of additional financing that it just screams out. So we're, why we're are we here. going that's, out? That's why we have this workshop, and that's yep. why we're here to answer them. And um, we just received this. Is just? Could you explain this? Sure. Uh, so this is just all of the events that we run as a city, um, broken down by the anticipated budget uh, for this coming year. How much it will cost to run those events? Um, there. Conservative estimates compared to, to what we'd like to do, and we can continue to grow these events. But like I said, we're committed to, to raising some funds to continue to make them bigger and better every year. Um, so if you have specific questions about anyone next to them in the, the comments or kind of the components of the event, so these are is this the actual expenses or are these just an estimate? These are the actual, for the most part, an actual. There, I mean, they're an estimate, but they're based on mostly what we spent this previous year. Sometimes there's an extra component built in that we'd like to see next year, right. but they're you know within probably for the most part. <clears throat> Just about everything except salsa nights and the car show. Most of them are probably within fifty or seventy-five bucks, well, one way or the other. Those two. They're outliers. Yeah, they're outliers. You I know, agree. they're looking out from a taxpayer point of view. Thirty thousand dollars for salsa nights is an expensive. Is an extreme expense for the city when we're looking at raising taxes. That's my point of view. Now, what's that breakdown? I don't know. $30,000 salsa night. Uh, car show, $19,500 is a lot. Because I started the car show. It is. It, it also uh, breaks down, so the salsa night breaks down to about 30 cents a person per salsa night in the city. And I, I would pay 30 cents to go to salsa night, so I'd be happy about let's, that. Let's let the people <laughs> going to the salsa night to pay. Hey, man, I think providing something is good, but to pay a $30,000, well, between the two, $50,000 is to Something me is I just... Thought, is there a, a specific question? Yes, you have this breakdown. I wanted the analysis of it. Um, these events and these other programs, um, I'm trying to relate them to this for each expense. Um, do you have another worksheet for each of your line items? Usually in no, the past... No, we haven't provided that for any of the departments. Uh, I'm requesting so that. No, we don't have that. Uh, uh, no, we're not going to do that for every line item. In the past, they haven't we, provided... We have not to provided that since I've been an employee. Of and every council that I've served on or served on as mayor work 
materials on each department budgets were provided, so they have an explanation. I'm I didn't even requesting that. Can you clarify the question? I don't, I'm not going to every single line item and every transaction from that line item. Which Worksheets on each line item so we no, know. I'm not to hire three for you. No, because this is something that each department would already have. In the past, there are my that, or any other, yeah, excuse me. In I'm the past, excuse me. Let me finish. When I'm, I I'm finish, then I'm, I'm, when I'm finished, you I can not, answer. I'm, I'm, I'm not finished asking I'm, the question. And that's why I asked for clarification. Uh, you gave it and to I, no, I'm giving you a clarification of what I requested in the past and what I'm requesting now. For me to go over a budget and be given one line item with no backup on that expense is wrong. If you have a question about any of the line items, that's why we are here. So I have received your request, uh, and we are not going to provide that for every single line item. Can we move on to, to the next have, question, please? If you have a specific one line item, a couple yeah. line items, you ask for detail of if you want to see, right. if you want to say, what's the 21000 that was spent this year in Parks and Rec, I'll give you that. But to give you 700 lines, there could be 7,000 transactions in those lines. I'd be sitting here killing trees okay. for every tree hugging event you do. It's we just received this. It's this is a total of $74,440. Point of order. Please ask the question. I'm and I don't, I, I don't just say this to you as a counselor. I mean this to everybody. We're not here to pontificate. Make yes. your point through your question, not through your statement or declaration. This is a waste of our time right now. This is a breakdown, $74,440. Could you break those down into each of those departments? That is a reflection of the public events and activities line item. That's all public events yes. and activities? Yes. But public events and activities is a budget of 10000 This was Councilman Acosta's question. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Sure. Just spending, this is a breakdown of $74,440. And you're telling me it comes, what, what we had it's coming out of public events and activities. Public events and activities, yes, which is an allocation place. of $10,000. Uh, $50,000. No, you're requesting fifty. Correct. Yes. This is what you spent this year. That is uh, okay, to the 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 projection for this projection coming budget. Based on I asked you if this was spent we, this year. Based on the events that we run last or this past year, this is what we're anticipating spending next year. Correct. Most of them, but this is pretty reflective of what's happened in last year. But so this is, this is a projection, projection for, for next year. Yes, yes. that's not what you told me originally. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. To Marie is waiting, waiting patiently as our other counsel. But if that's a projection of the coming year of seventy-four of a seventy-five thousand. Yeah, you only budgeted 50. Correct. Well, you, the mayor's committed to fundraising. That's a projection. No. If he doesn't fundraise the rest, we're not going to do those events. That's just if a you projection. Only budgeted, if the right. events add up to 74, he's not going to do those events that we yeah. can't fundraise for. That, that was the, that was the commitment. Question We've said that in private meetings and workshops. Is if he doesn't fundraise for the Delta, he's not okay. going to do those events. Maria, anything? So there's no doubt that community engagement has increased. You know? Um, because of a lot of the events that, that we're having. Um, just today I got a phone call asking about the salsa nights. I, I have a, a club from Boston of Ferraris who keep asking about the car show. But I would love to see more sponsorships for these and less money being used towards this and the money being used for, is there any way that we can use that money for after school programming for educational purposes? You mean if we get increased? Okay, so, so again, a couple of components. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. I think we are spending this money now to establish these events, events that people will want to sponsor. Okay. So it takes a little bit of an outset investment on our part, but these are events that I don't want to say could or should be fully sponsored in the future, but a significant investment from outside sources is something that I anticipate in the next few years down the road, um, probably growing from the year. I also wholeheartedly agree that I would like to see a lot more of my department's budget and of city funds and taxpayer money spent on investing in youth programs. Um, I'm especially committed to, again, uh, trying not to overlap services because I think the school department is, and I, we work together very closely, um, we 
try to come up with a comprehensive 2020 plan for what summer will look like by 2020 that builds in educational as well as physical activity components. Um, I don't want to, you know, so our summer program which started out as a meal service program does. We have a lot of enrichment folks that come in. We have outside providers that do programming. Some of it is more specifically educational focus. Some of it is more tangentially like a nutrition programming or health and wellness. It is educational, but might not be what we consider like a, necessarily a, so we did do a STEM week last year where we had a, a group from Boston, MIT, from MIT come down and do a big science <coughs> So we do have some of that aspect, but it's a little bit better. Um, so with the caveat that I don't want to copy what's already being done in the city, I want to work with those folks to build a more comprehensive program. Yes, I would very much like to see a lot of my budget go towards not just youth uh, program in general, but especially youth programs. Thank you. Council Rekha. Wow. So it's been brought up that we've spent pretty much the same amount this year, just not from this budget. So this may be a question for Mr. Duval, maybe a question for you. Yep. Show me where then we should expect a forty thousand dollar decrease from last year's budget. And so we've allocated that money this year somehow, right? Which means it shouldn't show up in whatever line item we took it from this past year. So where is that $40,000 So um, I So there's three spots basically that become that, became that bucket. So when we have excess revenue with my law, I've been, I've been um, approving expenditures in the, uh, not only in the public events, which was about 13 grand year to date, where the budget was 10, Mm -hmm. um, professional, where it says miscellaneous program in 17, I added the word elderly because now we're going to have elderly programs for 18. That 22 grand is basically event money for 17 that I approve. Um, and if you look at the mayor's executive section, um, and that's why there's an increase this year so that we don't go through this problem again in 18. Um, if you look at community outreach, the budget was 8 grand in 17 where we spent uh, about 18 grand here today. What, what so was in the executive, uh, the first one after the revenue, I'll say it's page, uh, I'll get the page right on. Uh, page 10. Yeah. So if you look at the community outreach, there's 18 grand there, 17.5. Yep. So you add up all those numbers, that's basically been, there's been some, some of that 17 in the mayor's budget was like backpack sponsoring, I mean, uh, I don't mean to deflect again, but Josh knows more about the smaller ones, like, you know, for backpacks and school stuff, back school. but back to school stuff. But the majority of that 17 was, you know, an offshoot of the sh what initially has been this shortfall in the public events <coughs> line that, uh, that's been getting approved by, through my statute. Um, now, you know, and that's why we asked Rob to dictate, uh, dedicate a, a conversation and a list for education purposes to say, okay, this is what we're really doing now. What we've been doing, we, we, need, we need to uh, be transparent with our shortfall, you know, where we're gonna fundraise, you know, so it's, so sort of the line is that first 50, if you look at, I mean, I think the car shows also, and maybe one more with Navigant. After that, the smaller ones are gonna be fundraised for that than the mayor's for that. Um, I think, you know, and that's where we try to address some of that stuff in the budget in 18, where, we put 50 there. There's, there's there's an increase in the elderly line for 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 Rob in that section. And again, again, when it comes to council, council members' request, there's there's been an increase in community outreach conversation from Maria's point and Colleen's point, especially last week. Is and that's why we decided to submit a budget that has basically a flat community outreach in the mayor's budget because there's been a, a almost a double effort in terms of conversation with, with the community and the mayor's office. So uh, I think that's a, what we're seeing in 18 is a much more realistic representation of what the council and what the mayor want this city to push out towards the community, if that makes sense. I, I, I may be waiting it wrong, but I, this is a much better representation of that equation flowing from you know people to the community, to the council, to the mayor, back to the community, you know, in terms of feedback. And I, I guess that's the best way to say it. I hope that I'll put that answers. Yeah. Here you go. 
uh, street purification workers. Last year we had two, right? Part time. Mm -hmm. And this year three. This year two. So we had two, so, we, so we last won. year uh, we had one seasonal temporary park maintenance worker, and that's what we're proposing increasing to two. So the street beautification workers uh, focus exclusively on Dexter and Broad, um, with a couple of other very specific tasks like watering plants. Um, my temporary field maintenance worker doesn't work during winter because there's not a whole lot of field maintenance that needs to happen under all the snow. Um, but at this point, there's so much usage of all of our parks across the city that he quit simply just can't keep up over the course of the day um, with the hours that we had budgeted for. So we can hire some. I was looking at the numbers and there was a bit. So yes. I thought we had three this year. Yeah. And I was looking at the numbers and. Um, yeah, no problem. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. <coughs> a request to Josh since uh, we just brought up uh, many of the count the accounts are we cross responsibilities on accounts could you give a breakdown which you've just shown a mayor's community outreach of 20,000 then we have. Sure, I, I'll go ahead. And could you trust. could you document that? I can't write that down now, but uh, could you provide that of how much money is spent in all the different departments in these programs? Um, so I would request. I can give you a breakdown of what the, <clears throat> the transactions have been, which department it falls under. Sometimes that's rather ambiguous, right? A, a sponsorship for an event, back to school. Um, Back to school celebration sponsorship that doesn't necessarily fall under a department, that's why it goes under this one. Um, so, if you like a, a breakdown of those transactions, you provide that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> could you also separate many of the items that you have in your department, some of yours, and I think the Department of Health or the Office of Health? relate to the school department uh, or, or school activity. How much money are we spending, and this may be going to Josh also, how much money are we spending uh, in subsidizing school activities, programs, personnel, and, and do we get reimbursed for that? I don't. We don't. Uh, so I, I work with the schools, but I don't. Uh, I don't subsidize any of their programs. I'm not I mean, sure. That's well, why I'm not yeah, sure. So, so our schools, I think the closest thing to that is so. is that they have not paid for field usage right. in the past, um, which unfortunately is a conversation that I'll need to have with everybody. Um, I'm not sure can continue <coughs> because we are struggling to keep up with our field maintenance costs, and I think we are unfortunately going to have to start charging groups in the past we haven't. Um, some of which have already indicated to us that they are happy and able to pay, which is really pleasant. Um, but that's probably the closest we come to subsidizing any of their programs. We, we have programs that work hand in hand, but they are city programs. After school programs? Right, so that, so for instance, our after school program is hosted at Veterans Elementary School. Um, Veterans runs an after school program until five o'clock, at which point they finish. And that's not a very convenient time for parents to pick up their kids if they work you know, a second shift. Uh, they also don't serve a dinner there, they just serve a snack. So our program is specifically built to piggyback off of the back of that to keep kids uh, active until 8.30 to serve them a dinner um, so that we're complementing what's already being offered by the schools, but we're not subsidizing a program that they're running separately. Now that's a, you're requesting 50, almost 55,800 uh, on that. Is that just personnel? Yes. Cost? Pretty much, yes. There's and small, that's because how many workers? Uh, one one after school coordinator and three part time workers. Uh, they're all part time. Um, so one after school coordinator and three after school workers. Uh, that's dependent. So that basically caps the number of kids we're able to serve. Um, right now we're, we, uh, we get capacity on the third day of the program. Um, and we 
can't really have more than eight kids in the program. We also subsidize this with a lot of youth workers that we uh, fund our youth fellowship program or through BIVCAP or Surge Jobs or CCAP or CF Housing. Um, so I, I pat myself on the back, but we're pretty resourceful about the volunteers or the other staffing resources that we can bring to play. But at bare minimum, we have to have our city adult staff to run these programs. Now, where possible, I do help to coordinate spaces for other programs that want to come in. So organizations like Beat the Streets um, or Astro Sports that want to come run programs for the city, then I help them. You know, if they're going to provide all the staffing, all the equipment, I might not charge them for fuel, something like that. So in that sense, I do subsidize some other programs, but that's just to provide more programming right. for kids in the city. Do you get any funds from any other state or grant programs? Yes. A lot of grant funding, uh, some of the states, some can of the can federal. I, can I ask first, before you get into that, uh -huh. that we are provided with a list of all grants that are coming into the city uh, through revenues we are receiving. I that's publicly available. Well, we, we can't necessarily provide grants that are coming into the city because we can't anticipate grants until we actually receive award of the grants. Many grants are fluctuate from year to year. They may be available one year, not available the next. You may apply for a grant one year, get it one year, apply for it the next year, may not get that grant. So there's not a, a specific list of grants that we know we're going to receive. And there's Could also you? grants like the uh, Tobacco Prevention, the DFC grant, uh, Prevention Coalition Progressive Latino has that uses some of their funding to offset some of the costs of our youth programming, but we haven't as a city received that grant. And we do work a lot with Progressive Latino, their 501c3 partner, well, 501c3 exclusively well, eligible. What we can provide is a list of grants that we have received. Yeah. And the ones that you applied for. Yeah, I'm sure that's something that uh, Derek could put together. For next yeah. year. Because if we have a grant, it's a program that expends personnel and may be a grant that has events that we spend money on. So if we can have a, an idea of, because it wasn't provided to us in the budget, of outside sources grants, that reflects also in what the city does and how it spends so I would, money. So I would encourage you not to rely on grants and sponsorships as a source of funding for uh, for city events or city activities. Is that a good example? Summer food service program funding could be very right. Well be. right, we don't know what's going to happen next year for the summer food service program. Uh, the reason that we have elderly programming built into the uh, budget this year is because unexpectedly, with almost no warning, the state cut the community service grant program, which is about thirteen is twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty seven dollars we receive every year without any fuss for I don't know how many years before I was here, unexpectedly they cut it and it, our elderly programming services drastically suffered this past year because we didn't it was after the budget season we didn't really have any options. It's not something that there's a lot of grant funding available for. Unfortunately people don't want to fund elderly programming. Um, so relying entirely on it can be very difficult. But we do try to supplement everywhere we can. Thank, thank um, you. Totally understand that, but if we can get a breakdown of what grants the city has received over the past year and what you applied for this year, that relates to the other line items in the budget and what we do as a community and what we what projects we fund. I appreciate that breakdown. Sure. I mean, so and not just your department, of all of all the departments, especially in the planning department, those funds were not broken down for us. I'm requesting a breakdown. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Maria, uh, that, that should be completed, Rob. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you everybody. for your time. And uh, anyone have any questions, I'm sure Rob would be glad to, to sit down with you. Tom, I, I'm not going to explain. Rob would sit down with anybody. <laughs> if you're interested in volunteering, <laughs> 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 In my Wonderful. years here, I volunteered, volunteered for many programs. Thank and you. I can be happy to have you back. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate Thank it. You. But Thank I you, still everybody. have more questions to the answer, and I hope that the council has an opportunity to ask other questions of other departments because we've been limited, um, Bob, to the questions that we've asked, and there are other questions. Councilman, I'd be happy to set up uh, an individual meeting with you and any department director that you that you desire. You not once have requested that or I have. me to. 
and I've met I, with the individual department heads myself. Well, Unfortunately, if, I don't you want to, you to coordinate for Well, if you want it to happen, then... I appreciate well, I think you, you do, because you can't just walk up to the window and take right. the finance director's time right. for 40 minutes without, a, or without an appointment. So I think you do need to... That, that's up to the finance say. director to tell me I only have... No, so I'm going to tell it's you right. they don't agree with you. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Are you, you just going to challenge you? You can, can, you can tell, tell me whatever you wish. Thank you. I'm only asking for the information that we're entitled to. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Is Peter in the building? Yes. Why don't we do Peter next and then... Let's finish. She's got to remain here either way. Yeah, that's right. I thought we'd get to you. Okay. Well, let, let me interject. One thing is, this is this about you, Ed. Um, Has that everyone signed the attestation form for the class board? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I should go get it. I have it. You have it with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, can you get it? Yeah, we'll do it later. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. I had it written down. Thank you. I think Len needs a break. No, no, I was just going to go. It's cold. Thank you. Come to the hot seat. Come to the hot seat. The clerk begins on page 10. Hello, everyone. I'm going to use the microphone, which we have not been doing. Oh, well, actually, no, not page 10, sorry. Oops. Page 32. No. It isn't page 10. Oh, page 10. Yeah, it's 10. Page 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 you know, everyone says that, uh, that their the office is very busy, and I do not doubt in any way, people from that is true. Uh, our office is, in many ways, sort of the hub of City Hall. Um, it is the first floor, it is the one that has doors, not windows, so it's easy, accessible to everyone. And um, as um, one of the longest standing offices of the city, sort of by charter, it just carries a lot of the information of the city. So I'm not going to go through the description of what we do. I do want to speak to some of the themes of the work that we've been doing and um, some of the goals that you have. The goals, I have to be very careful about what I put. Not careful in that of what I want to tell you, but just be concise. Um, we have been working very hard for the past um, almost four years now. Um, and really working on sort of three sort of pillars of that are themes of work in the clerk's office, which sort of are collaboration, um, working uh, to improve our systems, and really modernization. So when I became city clerk, um, it was an office that, at, even as the hub of the building, felt very disconnected from a lot of the work that other departments were doing. So we spent a lot of time reaching out to our colleagues across the hall, third floor, second floor, uh, on Illinois Street, and really thinking through what is the work that the city clerk does that impacts the work that they do. One of the examples is property management. Uh, city clerk is a AMD property manager, so I think through their <coughs> buildings, through um, the cars, um, anything that is considered property is falls under my purview. We've also been thinking about IT as a service that cuts across everyone and thinking IT not as something that is in the back of our minds, but really something that we use to do the work properly. So I've had the opportunity and I've been very excited to have those conversations with the uh, different departments. With that are improved systems. So if we do think back to IT, what should it be so that our systems are seamless, they're effective, they're proper, and they're actually moving us forward in a way that is providing the best services. So we spend a lot of time thinking about that. And in my office, um, specifically the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, we spend a lot of time thinking through um, the business licensing, for example. So if a business comes in and they have to be licensed through uh, us and come to see you and be approved by you, what do we do to make those systems seamless and effective? And effective? And then our modernization is just everything that it makes us be a building of the 21st century and really thinking through not 
modernization just in technology, but actually in thought, right? So if somebody comes in and they need our services, what does that mean in that uh, we switch the model from yes but to yes and, um, and really think through that correctly. Um, so I can take questions about line items specifically. I can take questions about um, the goals, uh, whichever one you'd like to, for me to go in and whatever you're interested more about in my department. Kevin? Can you speak to the settlements this year, the claim settlements? Um, what accounts for that $7,385 over expenditure and, and why we predict there will be five grand more for next year? So claims and settlement, in the same way that um, City Solicitor has spoken last week on the um, contingency funds, are those sort of uh, expenses that we have by their nature, a hard time figuring out what they're going to be. So when somebody comes in and files a claim for the broken door, which I believe you've heard, uh, or um, a pothole, all of those are things that we can't really predict they're going to happen. So this year, we were fortunate that we didn't have a lot of pothole um, claims because winter wasn't that bad and DPW was really on top of, of everything that they were doing, so we didn't see much of those, but we did see others. And depending on what the cost is, and depending on how we settle, uh, that claim amount goes up. It's really the first year, <coughs> the second year, really, where we are getting better at predicting uh, what those costs could be. And we want to be careful and be conservative in overestimating as opposed to underestimating. The other thing that reflects this line that didn't in the past was the way that the Rhode Island to Local Trust, our insurance company, processes our claims. They used to take our $2,500 deductible before sending us a check. Now they send us the check and then bill us a few months later whenever the claim is fully closed for the for our portion. So it's hard to figure out today, if we're going to get open today, when we'll be paying. And some of those costs are claims that were open 2013 and 14, and they just finally closed out this year. Totally fair. So just holding on to the same questions I think it might be more of a question for you can you talk to us about the last three years worth of claims or settlements that we've had as a city um, well number one all these claims are council approved they're all transparent in the public meeting um, uh, that's a good question we only, we first established this line item in the 17 budget because we realized that we needed more transparency in how much this was costing the city um, I'd have to go back and look what I mean as help uh, over the next couple of days, but I think um, that was in a legal contingency line. That, um, in, but you, wouldn't, you, you yeah. probably wouldn't see it in 17 because we had the claims settlement line. You know? <coughs> so the, the 17 grand we spent in 17 the other day, that's that's current. But I'd say 16 and 15, it was probably in those previous years. It was probably in the legal contingency line. That's probably where I put it, but I'd have to go look at the detail to say to confirm that. But um, again, I don't, I, from a consistency standpoint, you know, last year when we put the budget together, we thought that this was a much more uh, transparent uh, view of what the council was approving, so you guys would know the claim history and the claim uh, threshold. Um, can you please explain a little more when you say uh, modernization of programs? I would like to see, like, uh, for example, the um, council meeting. Yeah, I know we always have an issue with the, you know, something the table, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get the best on technology. Can, can you please explain a little more about that modernization? Um, so, you want me just to ask, are you asking me why we haven't spent more money on better cameras or examples of modernization? Examples. Um. Okay. Um, so on technology, <coughs> modernization of technology, we've done um, our computer systems in our office, our uh, sort of batch systems, our uh, systems within our servers, all that technology that we use for different departments. We try to modernize those. It's also modernization of thought. So how we approach uh, our projects, how we approach the, the, the services that we're giving our residents. <coughs> Specifically to the council, 
one of the conversations that we've been having, it's been going on for, for some time now, is how we are, this room is set up and how much investment we are able to do for the upgrades that you're talking about. So if we were to invest in a better camera, it would be there would have to be other investments in infrastructure of the room to support that type of camera. So it's not just going out to Best Buy and buying a $5,000 camera because then the infrastructure, the sound system of the room would have to be upgraded. Um, the tables would have to be set up differently so you'd get the optimal view that you're looking for. So yes, we talk about it and we try to upgrade as much as we could. One of the things we just did is get a better computer that allows us to, uh, to transfer the videos quicker uh, and better and better quality so we can put them back on TV, they're on YouTube. So those are the things we've been able to do. It hasn't been the full change because that requires a significant investment that is being discussed, but it's uh, not like modern, modernization of our records. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, modernization of our records, which is what um, Josh just uh, put here in my ear, is we've been um, scanning our records, uh, so making them available. Land records, all of the recordings are online at the uh, well, they're not all of them. Uh, we've started putting them online and we're going to look for investments again. We have uh, some preservation funds to do that as well, scanning our maps. So all of those records that are being available, everything on the website, um, you know, just the abil ability to have uh, our licenses pre-formed uh, on the website, the things that we've been working on. But the, um, the IT company, well, they don't take care of the website, probably. It's something else. Somebody else could do that. Um, but I noticed that um, the IT department um, on the last year, I see the goals and objectives for the IT. Mm -hmm. But on this one, I don't see anything about the IT department and now that we, you know. So it's, it's one bullet in mind. So it's on page 32. Um, so I just put continuing coordination of IT yeah, services. So last year, so, and, and, on, and, and that was twofold. One, I don't want to pretend that I have the level of expertise that Mike Sanjin had when he described the goals last year for the IT department. He was running it as a full-time IT person. The company that we've uh, uh, contracted with, Apex, has just gotten on, and it would have been unfair for me to, at this point, impress of them that level of detail of a plan, um, So, because we're working on it. Uh, we're developing, we're reading, reviewing everything that had been done uh, in the past year and a half. We, were, we had about a few months of really lag time where we were just um, managing our services, and so now the conversation is happening with Apex. In the future, very, 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 very shortly, that plan, much more detailed, will be developed, and that's something that I'm working on with Apex. So at this moment, my goal is to continue to coordinate it, and that's really what I, as city clerk, will do, which is to continue to coordinate those services. The development of the plan will be done with them. You're Thank you. Council President, can I also just yes. point out, I just want to make it clear that uh, Sonia's section is on page 10, but it's also uh, city property on page 12. So okay. city property on page 12 that sort of leads over uh, to uh, page 13. So it's those two separate sections. I just want to make sure everybody uh, was aware of that. <coughs> Uh, I, I just want to commend you. Uh, you're one of three departments that actually your budget has gone down. So, I'd like to give credit where credit is due, and I want to thank you for that part. Hello, Sonia. Hello. Uh, I can see the uh, great, great uh, movement of people coming in and out from, uh, from the city hall, especially your department, and uh, thank God you can manage a, a lot of things here. I mean. People coming in now, putting together the, the, the agenda and doing a lot of things and <clears throat> being able to maintain the budget. Send. I mean, if you don't misunderstood, you have $677 less than in your budget than previous year. Right? Yeah. So 
hasta el presidente, con su presidencia y ahí also place that and congratulations for maintaining that. And hopefully every department will keep that, that like that and we don't have to be talking about uh, increased taxes today. Uh, the, another question is that in the same page but on top it say that community outreach twelve thousand dollars this is not part of your budget, is it? That is not. No, right. Okay. okay. If I may um just a comment. Thank you for the kind words. Um, but this, this was we, we were all very being very conservative, and I don't know that is how much room to celebrate there is. Um, I wish I could ask for more, and I wish I get more because I think we would do more. Um, so this is a, a, a budget that is, is conservative, and is not in any way reflective of all of the needs that we could um, that we have or that we could do. So this is budget. as is the budget for everyone. So um, I, I appreciate your kind words and commending me for the work that we do. Um, I just don't want this to be compared to my colleagues who are asking for budget increases because we all are working very, very hard to provide all of the services that our residents serve. And I believe everyone who sat in front of you for the past few nights believes that they're asking for it. No, thank you. I, I, I don't want to remind you what the others do because uh, you don't have increases that they do. But I do uh, have my concern about tax increases because the tax payer has been uh, uh, on that department for five years, and uh, we got to talk about it definitely because it's, it, it's not something is pleased for, for anybody. Thank you. Good evening, Sean. Just to follow up on the question from I think Councilman Acosta regarding claims, the allocation. I know I requested from uh, the city solicitor in the past the breakdown of the uh, claims pending. He sent it to you. He sent it to you. He, he sent me the claims pending, mm -hmm. I have it right here, uh, going back to November. Uh, do you have something current? And you're allocating fifteen thousand um, for the new budget, and as of now we spent seventeen, and last year we allocated ten, so we're over. Uh, so, what do you foresee as the claims that we are uh, that is uh, possibly uh, a problem for the city to pay? A breakdown, you, I, you don't have it right now, if you can provide a breakdown mm -hmm. that we should be worried about for the next year, because I know some of this has been sent to, into local, and some of this is the city's responsibility. So it will give us an idea. Uh, are we really talking 15, or are we, are we talking more? That's true. So you're, you're just asking me to give you the information later? Yes, because I'm sure you don't have it now. I have the a letter that was sent from... So yeah. if, if so if it, if it was sent from the city solicitor, I'll transfer the information to him so he can update it. Yeah, I think it would be um, really not efficient to have me create something that he could just update himself. However, you so want we'll to follow that up um, and you can get that information. Now on your uh, city budget, uh, the city clerk's right, more self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning who does our uh, filming or recording right now? Wait, no, no, no. The copies documenting. We did. We did. My Is office does. We do it in house. We do it in house. We have a laptop. We connect the uh, camera to the laptop. It downloads the video. Who do we and, used to deal with. Uh, since I've been here, it's always been us. It's always been done in house. If there was something before that, it was way be it was before my. Time. What about the minutes? The minutes. I do the minutes in house. Okay. They're not microfilmed or documented or... They're on our website. They're uploaded on Clark Base. Are you dealing with Clark Base? Clark, Clark Base? Yes. So you're yes. contracting with Clark Base? Uh, Clark Base houses the minutes that I submit to them, as well as the city's agendas, ordinance, and resolutions. Okay, but we're contracting with them to, for that service. Correct. All right. Are we sending out any information for storage, uh, it has been done in the past. I'm not sure if you're mm -hmm. doing it 
Paper storage? No, microfilm storage, uh, Iron Mountain, things of no. that nature. No. No. We keep in-house uh, a copy and then it is uploaded on this web face uh, that is backed up and goes with the modernization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The video, the videos go, to, there is video CDs of the videos and those are the ones that are used for um, public access. The only way they can receive it is with a CD um, and then the videos are also put onto YouTube where they will stay for as long as YouTube is in. My question more involves around documentation of records. Um, if there was a massive fire in this building, uh, these records in fact were Microfilmed. And which, it depends on which record you're talking about. So we started out with the video. Document, recordings. Uh, those records are usually stored on a film, and at least one set is stored off the premises for security reasons. Do you do that? So our land record is with a company that is called Conduit. They used to be ACS. At one point, they were Xerox. Uh, all our land records are done that way. They are the stored. Uh, no. Um, they're stored online, um, which the public has access to now, and they continue to microfilm, and it's not in-house. But that's always been the process for our land records. And that's kept off, there's a copy kept off premise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of your accounts... Okay, okay. Under claims and settlement, um, if there's, so for example, a broken door, why doesn't that come out of the police department budget if it was done? Because it's city, it's... So there are some expenses like the property liability, right? Those are expenses that are city-wide and that there's a liability of the city. It wouldn't change... It would just, you'd just be putting it in a different bucket, really. That's all you're doing. This is a way of streamlining the way you're paying the bills. It doesn't, you know, putting it in the police department, that's a question that's actually come up before, would not change our liability and your responsibility to pay for that bill when it comes to you. Only the council can approve those, those payments, and that's why it comes to you at every meeting. That's why you are asked to uh, deliberate and make a decision on whether you approve or deny. Um, that it falls with you whether we would split this line into 10 and put it in each of our buckets and then my department never has a claim and never pays and it's zero, you know, it's 100% at the end of the year, or whether we put it here and it's you actually use, it really is, is a matter of just, and I can correct me, accounting. Really, it's all it is because this is an expense that we would have to pay no matter what. Okay. And then can you explain the non-capital equipment? The increase in property, city property. Yes. 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 Those are computers, basically. No computers. No computers. Uh, we have several departments um, <coughs> that have not had upgrades in uh, computers in five, six years. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the, you type three words and you wait for it to show up. And it's it's really getting to an unsustainable status. So what departments have been modernized? Um, so, for example, my department, we got computers four years ago. But it's computers, you know, they, in four years, you start to have to change. So it's, it's, it's something that if, if we stay on top of of our computer program, we won't have to spend as much in one year because then you'll have three or four every year that get upgraded. Um, so that's what we're sort of trying to play catch up uh, with a lot of the, the work, with the infrastructure that we have that is very, very old. We think also there's different departments that also have different needs for the computers. Uh, some of the computers get used every single day, whereas some are mm -hmm. off to the side as a, as a backup and so sort of, sort of, sort of. And then some, some departments have much more um, intense programming needs. So you have to account, like planning would have to have, um, you know, the, the mapping and things that are of my department, my, my staff may not need. Um, but, so we want to be able to account for the, the proper equipment. 
On the, on the city property uh, line on pages on page 13, uh, can we talk about the repair and maintenance contracts and why they've, they've gone up by 42,000? Um, sure. But also the, the electric and the water. It seems like we got like a water park or a theme park coming up. <laughs> maybe, maybe it will come. Um, so if you see all the line items on line 13 where have zeros and they're negatives, this is really not a change in any way of how much we are asking for. What we are trying to do is to be consistent in how we are accounting for them. So if you look, um, there is a telephone police, there is a telephone fire, there's a telephone DPW and there's a telephone out of city properties. Whenever a telephone bill comes in, we have to sit there and split the bill according to the department. It is a waste of time. That's all it does. It doesn't change the way the telephone is used because it's a, it's a basic need, right? Um, so it's just gonna be used. It's a matter of accounting. So what we did is we took all of the telephone, we put them in one line out of it. We put all, anything that was repairs and maintenance, the contracts, where it included the custodial services, for example, it was separate um, in four other lines. We just put it all in uh, the contracts. So the increase is just really us putting it all together. So if you were to add all those lines, that's what they would be. Does it make sense? That, that, that still doesn't account for the 75 grand difference in that budget. Wait, okay, so tell me which. Right, so there's a $75,000 increase from fiscal year 17 to 18. And if you take into consideration the IT, which I know is new, it's 33,000, and the new computer is a 7,500. So call it 40 grand, where's the other 30 grand come from? I'm sorry, could you, which one is? So, so if, if we look at the absorbing of all the zeros, say, right, and just say we're replacing that into RM contracts, city building, mm -hmm. and then these heating, telephone repairs, so on and so forth, the, the difference between last year's budget and this year's budget is 75000 give or take. And the only true increases from what we've talked about so far are the IT consulting, which is 336, and the computers and our capital, which is 75. So if we put that at around 41,000, there's still 34,000 that I'm not seeing in the consolidation. Um, we haven't had these 
contracted service agreements where they come in every quarter and check our boiler or go ahead and check our water heater or whatever the case is. And I do know that that accounts for a portion of, uh, of the increase. I'm not sure exactly. And also, yeah, so I did, there is an increase for repair maintenance of city buildings. Um, what also, in, in a, it doesn't show now because of how we put them all together, but one of the examples, for example, in the hydrants, so FY17, the adopted was 115. The FY18 adopted, uh, proposed is 120. So there is an increase of utilities. The utilities continue to go up. And so that, if I were, if I were to split this up again, you probably see them there. Because there, there is, there were, the you know, utilities have gone up. So it's like 5,000, 5, like that 5,000 would show up. It shows up by itself. So I can split this back out. So you can see where that extra 35 would come from. So what we, we're doing is we've been looking at the history and mostly on the utilities, right? So use your, you need to use your FY to 17 to date and then project that, but then I just put them all together. And that that is the only place where I could think that there would be any piece because there was really not another uh, request other than the non capital equipment and the repairs and maintenance of the building, which went from five to 10. So, so even on that, like uh -huh. nine months into the budget, we spent sixty-nine thousand on hydrants. Why did we budget one hundred fifteen grand? Because at twelve months, that would put us at ninety-three thousand, roughly. Most likely, it had to do with the previous year. So hydrants is what we pay if there's a fire. And I don't know if you remember last uh, week, uh, Chief Riley said we've had a good year. So it's the same thing with the um, snow plowing. One year is bad, one year is good. So we project and we use the numbers that we have and then sometimes it works out for our, uh, in our favor, sometimes it does not. Had we had one or two more fires, this line item would have been blown. Yeah, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Page 12, um, dues slash subscription. What can you pick under city property? Newspapers, um, things like that, subscriptions <coughs> to journals, license. Um. Okay. Um, also, about EIT company. <coughs> I know you have to, um, with, if any department needs work, mm -hmm. they have to come to you to put a ticket or how? Do, we have how a they, uh, uh, IT help that. desk, so employees have access, um, all employees in City Hall, DPW, uh, have, and FIRE have access to a, a phone uh, a help desk, they can call in. The IT company will remote into our computers and um, try to fix whatever it is that we are having a problem with. Should that not be sufficient, then I they communicate with me and we decide whether we dispatch an engineer or not. So it just through a phone call? Yes. The, the the cyber, huh? Yes, and it's been working amazingly. Yeah. Everyone's thrilled. Um, because I know, um, I thought they put a ticket and then have to wait. Because I heard one of the departments has been waiting for a, about a month or a month and one It week really depends. It depends on the, some work done. It depends on the, on on the the type of work um, and what you know the actual the, the work. If it's, for example, today there was an employee whose uh, whose computer wasn't connecting to the printer. She called immediately that was connected. That it took her, she wasn't on the phone for more than five minutes for that to be resolved. That has never been the history, so for as long as I've been here, yeah, that we would get that kind of quick service. Then there was another employee whose uh, work is, mm -hmm. is a cable issue with his computer. We were not able to resolve it by phone, so we had an engineer go in, look at the problem, try to figure out why the computer wasn't working because uh, we weren't able to do it remotely. 
And now that question is getting that resolved through a different way. It's been just a, a few months, not, a, not even. And uh, the feedback that we've received from our employees have been uh, very, very positive. Mm -hmm. Well, the only I, I, I just uh, clarify, I, I believe that fire hydrant uh, thing is a flat fee. Um, I questioned that last year with the uh, nobody had the answer. There are not water meters on the fire hydrant, and uh, I actually want to talk to the Tucker Works fly because at times they they're responsible for flushing our hydrants. Why should we get paid for them flushing our hydrants? But that's whole. I, I really think the hydrant is a flat fee. It's out of that, that that's a fair amount, by the way. And uh, I, have, I have no objection to it. I, I, just for clarification, uh, I think we have no choice in the matter whether we have no fires or 100 fires. I think it stays the same. Uh, I asked that last year. Nobody can answer. I don't believe uh, it. It may be a flat fee, but it may be a flat fee for use because we have had fluctuation mm -hmm. on that line item. If we use it, we pay more. Mm -hmm. But I know there's no water meters on the fire items. I've checked. But, <laughs> but I'm into that stuff. And, uh, <laughs> Like Puchu Park, I, 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 I question the fact that we have to get a water meter, which they've already clarified that we don't. So that's a good thing. So no, no big thing. Just uh, that, you know, there's no meters on the kind of hybrid. Thank you. Sonia, on pay pay to them uh, and the the heating fuel, uh, the budget last year was seven thousand one hundred forty. And this year is forty six thousand three hundred and eighty. I uh, combined uh, heating fuel of the city buildings, heating fuel police, heating fuel fire, and heating fuel DPW. Or you combine it all of all them? into that. So it's, it's just going to make it easier when we are paying the bills that we don't have to split the accounts into different accounts. We just put it into one and pay it off. That's all it is. So and the same, same thing with the water treatment. Yes. yes, and same thing with telephone and electric. But anyways, uh, I can see at the end of the budget there is an increase combining both together seventy-two thousand dollars. That's because of that. So that was the so that was sort of the question that uh, Councilman Acosta mm -hmm. had just asked. Um, so there there were some increases in utilities. The way I've assuming based on what the conversation just had, there were some line items that went up like non capital equipment and IT, um, but then there are some utility increases that put all together account for the other, for the rest of it. And that will, mm -hmm. will amount to $72,000? Yes. Mm -hmm. The $75,000 difference, yes. I thought uh, the question that he was asking was about electricity. Uh, no, it was along the same line. It was the same. It was the same. Thank you. I think this this adds to the confusion uh, of the different line items that you've combined. I've requested and I requested again, Josh, a historical review of the last three years audited. Uh, we gave you that. Myself, I believe the city clerk called you, and I believe you picked them up today. So yeah, Friday. Clerk. That's why I gave you an envelope. Those were the financials that were in the audit book for the past three years. Fifteen, well, the past three audits, which obviously seventeen is not audited yet. Those uh, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, the six or seven page financials that's in each audit book. Council, did you I will. Yeah, I will check that. I'm not, I don't have that over with me. Uh, it was a white envelope. Okay, do you have a question? I'm uh, yes, able to answer your question if you have one. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, the comparison to no, try to link follow link back on uh, what you spent, what you've been allocated this year, and what you're proposing with the review, if it was all together, it makes it a lot easier. Your combination of the different departments, uh, as you mentioned to Josh, I, it comprises of the $75,000 increase. That's the $75,000 increase? Yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, unless I've answered. The, 
along with the IT. Yeah. So it's 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 IT. IT. Could you break that break that out so we can see exactly what the expenses are? You you're combining what the expenses in the police and the fire buildings with the city hall to make it easier to pay. From my yes. So if you would like to add um, city <coughs> fuel fight. So you want me to tell you what the FY18 would have been proposed if I had not put zero next to it? Well, you did put zero, so we're asking. So are you now. asking me to, to put in, well, what is now is in uh, FY17 as of 331. Some of them have increased, and because you combine them, it's kind of hard to tell which The utilities, so, um, I mean, the increases are minimal, and I then think that that would be controversial to assume that I uh, electricity bill would have gone up three thousand dollars. So, what I try to do is to make this a much easier budget actually to read, where you'd be able to see one line item heating fuel, and understand that that's how much we pay for heating fuel, regardless of whether the police department has a two thousand dollar increase or not. Like that, would not necessarily. It's not controversial, and I don't understand how it would help you understand what the budget is going by if you just need to know that heating fuel is budgeted at $46,000. Yes. Okay. Do we need 46000 That's the question. You know, so you have, let's say, repairs and maintenance city buildings. You've increased to $5,000. I'm sure there's a rationale on what that $5,000 increase is. Every line editor should have a rationale. Either you go up or you go down, or you stay the same. So I'm only asking for the rationale for your line who's not just in your department, but in every department that... So rationale for utilities is, is history, um, and it's based on FY17-330 and the history and how much we project the fiscal year to end at. Um, there's really no debate or anything other than that. Um, that is calculations that the finance director does. She looks at the end of third quarter, projects end of fourth quarter, and then proposes with together what we propose what that utility bill would be. Where there was actually a conversation or a discussion for needs, because the ones that I've already established that I asked when uh, Councilman Rivera asked, what is non capital equipment? Computers. Uh, what is um, the IT services? Those are the ones where there was actually a conversation. Other than that, it is history and projection for as in a quarter four. On the street lights, uh, is that strictly the cost to the na national grid for the overhead lights on the street? Or does that encompass, let's say, the cost of putting the new street lights in? The cost of new street lights are in the capital. So this is just the electric cost Correct. from National Grid. Mm -hmm. And that's a, an annual payment of 226 on stage the same. Under dues and subscriptions, so far it was of March 31st of 1600. Why are you asking for more money for that? If we haven't used the amount that was requested. Those usually increase, uh, are increases in the due <coughs> subscriptions, like Promise Roll goes up, New York Times goes up. Um, they, they, all, they usually go up and we just account for those. Yeah, but you've only used, so far as of March, 1600 I don't have my number as of today, but that number is at, is much more different today than it was. Uh, the other thing that happens is that the business subscriptions don't come in every month. Some of them are quarterly payments, so this may uh, it was low because there were several payments that hadn't come through for the third and fourth quarter. Are we are we on the three rounds? So I've been assured that you guys did a great job building uh, the IT consulting service, and I don't doubt it. Um, can you speak a little bit to, given the expenditure, you know what set them apart from from some of the other uh, bids, and <clears throat> correlated to that, my assumption is having IT services will so that some of our non-capital equipment lasts longer. 
Um, so related to that, you know, if we need more computers, why haven't we spent the three thousand dollars we did allocate to it this year? We've spent five hundred seventy. Again, um, that money is actually has already been spent. Um, and part of it, it wasn't spent because I didn't have the IT support to make me the, help me make the decisions that we needed to make. So um, we are in a much further along on SLN item today than we were at the end of March. Um, the, the vetting process, it was a very, very intense vetting process because it has been such a priority of the mayor to have quality IT services and to try to do it in a way that is cost effective. So all, everything that we've done in the past few years has been with that goal. And we didn't want to just change and go with something that didn't make sense. So we, we interviewed several companies. Um, we ended up choosing Apex based on the work that they've been doing um, in part. Um, I mean, they, they interviewed well. The cost was, uh, was a good cost. Uh, as compared to other companies, but also they have experience with OneSocket, and um, we heard really good things about them there. So they have experience and they understand more than other companies that we talk to how municipalities work. So they were able to come in and understand, know our process, our programs. So they knew really well the IT program that we use. They knew all of the tax assessment programs. They knew everything that we use, and we were able to from the moment they started, not really miss a beat to having to explain how we function or how we operate. And that has been invaluable to us based on how long we've been sort of in this uh, unstable space. And there was a mid-range yes. company uh, that, that we met with. Uh, one was priced much higher, one was priced a little bit lower. Um, we met with them in person, spoke to their sales reps, <laughs> Um, and one of the big things that I'll just echo what Sonia said was their familiarity with our programs already. Um, when we were looking to bring them on, we were going through a, uh, a better term, firestorm at our fire department um, and their IT concerns. Um, and they had the capacity to come in and, and, and uh, alleviate those issues right away. Uh, and that was a, 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 a kicker for us. And one of the things that we also did in comparison to what type of uh, set up system we want to set up is we talked to other municipalities about how they have set up. So we talked to places where they hired their own staff, uh, places where they contracted, and for uh, for us, it just this system felt like the best um, the best setup. Okay. Um, your department also handles elections, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Um, your budget allocation last year was nineteen thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. You're proposing twenty one thousand seven hundred and thirty. Mm -hmm. Last year we had three elections. We had a primary election. <coughs> Had a agenda. Uh, we had a presidential. Yes, we did. We had three elections. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, my understanding, we, we I don't know if we have an election. Uh, we have. We do. We have. Yes, you do. <laughs> you are. Okay, we have. Um, so you're, you're right. You're okay. out. You're so out. I can ex I can explain. So you're it out. is primary um, and a general, just citywide. A primary general um, that state, will be state. that will be Post part of FY19 because it will be in September and November of 2018. So you are correct. This fiscal year, there is no anticipated elections. We um, again, I want to be very conservative because we have had several elections in the city, several special elections in the city, um, and elections are expensive. The 21000 represents the amount of money that was spent this past fiscal year for elections, which did not account for three, it accounted for two, because this fiscal year that starts July 1st through June 30th, so it only accounted for September and November. So next year, there will be a September and November election, so we have to account for those two as well, which is here. But the that's other the next budget. Yes. So this budget, but there's no election. 
Uh, if there is none, so we continue to um, request the um, what's the, le the level funding for our election. I, I understand that, but since we, if you wish that we may have a special election, mm -hmm. then we could possibly allocate a small amount to take care of. Do we need 21,007? No. In my opinion, we need possibly 10 to put in the budget to be cautious, but we don't even know we have an election. So this entire amount is just projection, and it's really, I'd say it's not tax-wise. Uh, it's not in the best interest of taxpayers to put money <coughs> that we may not have because we have contingency accounts also. There are other accounts in the budget that money could be taken from. So I would recommend there's that we prep take a closer the, look at this. Sure. Um, um, there's prep uh, funds that need to go into for the September election. All of the mailings, all of the purchases that will have to happen. Uh, in by the end of the next fiscal year. So yes, the election is going to happen in September or November. That does not mean that there aren't funds that need to be allocated for it. And our history shows that we have spent every penny of our election funds pretty much every year. So if you want to be conservative and do a budget that is based on your history, that's what you do. If you want to gamble it and hope that next year you're not on, uh, over budget, you can do that as well. We've taken the finance approach of look at your history and project your future. And that's all we've done. But what, but what you've done is you've allocated an amount for two full budgets, for two full elections, which you have. You've even increased it. My concern is if we wanted to be a little safe, then we could put eight, nine, 10,000 in that line item. We definitely don't need 27,730. I mean, 21,730. 21,730. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, I can understand okay. being cautious, but there's no need for it at this point. point. Thank you. All right. Hold on. Oh, she doesn't have any. Oh, okay. I didn't hear. Sorry. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. We're going to have an opportunity to Take ask a break. Break questions in the future. And you're welcome to uh, okay. set something up at any of the top of the head and <laughs> see if you can get some time to sit down with them and put your questions down and have a little chit chat. Those are questions as well. We get Peter. Yeah. Why don't we be able to sit down and go over suggestions for line mm -hmm. item changes from our Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I'd like to have one public hearing and get some input from the public. Mm -hmm. Then in between that first passage of public hearing and the final passage of public hearing, we'll have some time to sit down and, and absorb everything that we yeah. have taken in thus far, including public comments. Good. Are we taking a recess? Yeah, take a recess. Yeah, take a five minutes. It's 19 to 7 to 10. You want to go to Peter? Peter's going to give us the next one.
state of Rhode Island Department of Health initiative to increase uh, health outcomes in various communities around the state. Uh, this past year, we worked very closely uh, with the law department on head cover receivership. And we've been, uh, through our community development block grant program, funded home buyer education and tenant education curriculum as well. So with that, I will open up uh, for questions for the council that anything, anything may have about my uh, operating budget, my capital budget allocation, or my goals and objectives in the past year. Okay. Um, Thank you, Peter, for being here. I hope you feel better soon. Um, I would say that just looking from your budget, most of it seems from modest increase related to cost of living increases. So I, I'll actually shift, and this might be a tough question for you to answer. But um, seems like from the president's budget, uh, transportation funds may be cut, and this train station may go from being a potential reality to a dream once more. Uh, do we have, and do you have, a backup plan uh, for raising the funds to work with Kentucky to finish this train station? Should that happen? We don't think that's going to happen. We expect to have the uh, contract awarded for the design builder of the train station uh, prior to September 30th, um, which is really, I think, the next opportunity that we would see um, action at, at the government level that might um, stall some of these grant awards. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not intimately familiar with the process, but it, it's also pretty hard for um, the federal government to withdraw funds that have been allocated and of which the timeline of award has not been exceeded. So I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that those funds will remain in place and we will uh, be able to use, uh, utilize those funds for the construction of the train station. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Um, last time you mentioned uh, about the train station, that what the total cost was like uh, 40 million, right? Correct. 40 million, which is like 30, or 33 summit from the state or federal, federal, I don't know. So the uh, city, uh, in cooperation with the city of Pawtucket and the Rhode Island Department of Transportation was awarded a TIGER grant, which is a, um, a federal grant um, in transportation projects. And I believe off the top of my head that that was $15 million. That was uh, paired with $22 million over four years from the state of Rhode Island's annual federal transit agency allocation for having a certain mileage of railroad track in a state of good repair. Um, so that puts the project um, at about $35 million and the city is working actively uh, with the city of Pawtucket and um, the Rhode Fire and Transportation to cover any, any funding gaps that may exist. The project is currently out to bid and we won't have uh, the bid numbers until later this summer. Um, so that will be the time when we will be um, figuring out any um, necessary additional funding um, should that be the right. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy, Peter, with uh, over overlooking your budget. Um, and I, I think the bottom line is when everything comes to fruition, all the projects that you have started, this administration has started, when it all comes to fruition, I think you're going to see uh, planning has certainly done its job over the last couple of years, so I'm looking forward to that, uh, from Veterans Park to the train station and all the projects, and uh, I think you've done quite well. Uh, I'm assuming other communities' planning budget has gone up sufficiently, I mean, well above percentage-wise what yours has, so I, I commend you for your work, and I'm, I'm happy with what I've seen. And, uh, uh, salaries kind of out of your hands, really, and some of, some of the expenses that just the cost of living and, and the cost of materials is just astronomical. So, with that, I'll move on to Franklin. Yeah. Thank you, Council President. You're very welcome. Yes, uh, as the President just has said, I know that the uh, department is doing a lot of things, and a lot of to our city. Uh, I would like to ask you a question about this. Uh, the, the city has a few buildings that allow. Empty vacated, nothing is happening in there. 
and I would like to know if the Babylon plan in the short term, for example, with the, where the school Alan Chong Fence was located, and also the, the building with the, just across diagonal from here, the, the building that where the Channel One was located, which is both, right now it's nothing happening in there. Do you have any plan? So both of those buildings that you're referencing are actually privately owned. Uh, the city does not own those. They both privately own? Correct. Mm -hmm. The city does not own those properties. Either one of those properties. Okay, okay I thought it was uh, uh, they belong to the city. They were sold during the receivership. Thank you. Um, hope you're feeling better first. Um, your department is basically run mostly on uh, state and federal funds. I have a request from Josh before a breakdown of all grants. Uh, could you give us a breakdown of what you have of your grants? What did you get allocated from the CDBG? Uh, and, on the, and, and the other uh, funding that comes in for all the other projects. Uh, federal, state or federal funds must come in for that, but it's an expense to us in the long run because we're going to have to maintain it, service it, send people over there, uh, provide water, uh, other things. Could you give a breakdown of grant funding of all sources? on all the projects. Right now I have no, I, I request information on the, the building on uh, Summer in Illinois. Uh, I've received nothing so far. I've, re I've requested a uh, breakdown of the expenses for the Illinois Street Playground. Uh, I haven't received anything on that or the uh, other playground on Crossman Street. Um, all these, some of these may have city funds involved. Some of them may not, but to get an understanding of what we are, what our expenses are, we need to get those information. So to answer the first part of your question uh, about the uh, annual CDBG allocation, uh, to my great frustration, uh, we have not yet received our 2016 allocation. Uh, there's been some staff changes uh, at the state office of housing and community development and they have not yet gone through the process of awarding our grant to us. Uh, Wasn't that supposed to be awarded in October? Certainly by that time, yes. Yeah. Uh, and our max is 500000 That's a maximum that we could receive? 550000 550 And we haven't received anything then? Correct, at this point. No, no non-entitlement community in the state of Rhode Island has received anything from the uh, Is there any indication that we are going to get something? Uh, there certainly is. We have a uh, minimum guideline annual allocation of $250,000. You applied for? I believe uh, full five hundred fifty thousand. So all our programs that were contingent on the grant CDBG, what are we doing with those programs as of now? Since, since there's no funding. So we're, uh, we're well positioned um, in that we were catching up on a backlog of projects um, from previous years. Uh, and we received our 2015 allocation late. We received our 2015 allocation in March of 2016. Uh, so we're just working through those 2015 projects now. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, I would like to have these 2016 allocations in a timely fashion. We have applicants who applied for this program, you know, in March of 2015. 16, and it's been a, over a year now, and they haven't received word on whether or not they're funding things that are, that are necessary for them to, to continue to provide services. But, but again, that's a, a, another example of why we do not include grant funding for certain programs and services, and is that money is not included in the budget. Just reiterating that. Was it, I understand your point, Josh. Yes. In the past, and I'm requesting it. If no, we have it requested. That it all relates to what the city does. If you're going to grant application for a program, and that program is not funded by the state, but we still have the program, and we're making up funds from someplace to pay for that program presently. 
uh, or other items that you have to continue doing. You still have to operate your office. There are some funds of the CDPG, my understanding, that goes for administrative costs. So that money hasn't been allocated. So this year, there has been no money coming in from CDPG to pay for administrative costs <coughs> as of now. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think the city is in a good position, and I think uh, my department can, can continue to operate um, with grant funds that have received in the past for the, at least the next six months. That's excellent. But the question is, what do we have? What do we have already in grants presently? What do we foresee coming in in the near future? That relates to the budget, this budget, but also relates to the coming budget. You've done the projects uh, that we have in the city. A lot of good things happening. I have to give you credit. Uh, some of them we need some more information on, but uh, you've got a lot of good projects coming in. Uh, I've been questioned by uh, some residents and business owners on Broad Street of what's going on, and I did give them the name of a person who's contracted to serve the three communities. Uh, that person is the, co is the contact person. Sorry, do we just go back to the question? Do you have a specific question? The only other question I have in there is that you had other professional services. You reduced it, but what does that go into? Uh, you spent 28000 as of June 31st. You have had a budget allocation of $40,000. you are only requesting $40,000, so uh, you are still $10,000, $12,000 uh, to the good. Uh, what is that used for? So, uh, due to the project-based nature of my work, it's hard to predict um, into the future what those types of things are used for. Um, I would say that when opportunities arise, they need to be um, seized, and we've had a, we've been really lucky with things like the train station and the Broad Street project. Uh, Roadworks has, has provided a huge boom to the city in terms of construction work over the next decade, and um, the way that this fund is set up is that it provides some degree of flexibility. It's a contingency. I would to an extent. Uh, I would I would say that that money is well spent. Um, but it's not earmarked for any specific. Some of it is. Um, so we've been running Restaurant Week every year for I believe the last three years. Um, we've then we provided the marketing materials for that out of see, this account. I understand that, but see, that's the question I asked you, Joshua. Throughout the whole budget, you have pockets of money for different projects. Your the what you just mentioned, Restaurant Week, uh, is not in the city's activity events account which it's in a separate account. So all these pockets of money... Yeah, it's not run by our parks and rec department. It's a form of improving economic development, so Peter owns that right. conversation. Right. It's similar to... Well, it's, it's just... Case. It's promotional items. It's in, and it's similar to what is in the recreation department, what was in the mayor's yeah. department. All these pockets of money add up to dollars and taxpayer dollars. So if you could give a breakdown of all these pockets of money in all the different departments, maybe you try to put them together into one and separate them from these. Unless it's grants or funds coming in from other sources. That's where I, you know we need a breakdown also. So Peter, you know, what else is in that other professional services? Uh, restaurant week. So the city's e-permitting program. The city's what? E-permitting program. So we're working with the State of Browns initiative to e make e-registration available to businesses. We had a, a pilot project that was done by my predecessor uh, as of 2015. Do you um, utilize that for architects, consultants, et cetera, for whatever projects may Right, so the, the Mill District uh, <coughs> expansion down Roosevelt Avenue, which has uh, the original uh, five or six buildings that were part of that historic district, um, I think is, is really what is now in residential and um, the first property at the southeast corner of Cross and Roosevelt. That was the original historic district. That was the original mills that were served by the waterworks. I think the way we envision the Roosevelt app today, um, there's a much greater um, 
experience of what down there is historic, and I think it's important that we uh, preserve those buildings. So uh, we've been working with projects. Under salaries, is that 183,000 proposed? Is that for three positions? The position of principal planner was grant funded um, on a temporary basis for a period of years, and that grant is expiring next spring. So this $183,000 was provides funding for the three uh, city-funded positions in my department and the last few months of salary for the principal <coughs> planning position for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. So that, so how much do they get from the grant for that position? Because if I add, so on page 22, if I add the director of planning, the assistant director, and the business outreach is 157000 There's a $30,000 difference. Yeah, that's the cost of living, and then the last few months of the grant person is 20 grand, about 30. There's, a, there's a, like a 10 grand piece of the cost of living, and then there's 20 grand of covering a, a person that right now is covered by grant. And until, again, taking direction from the director, uh, until uh, we could ascertain the events beyond, I guess you could take events beyond FY18. So we're covering it for those few months, and then there'll be a decision of whether you know we keep them on for 19 and going further. So how so much is a few months? Like how many it's, months? It's 20 grand. I think it's. No, I know, but how many I months? I think it's so we 11 weeks. I, I don't so know the, the math. The issue is, um, if we were to lay this person off, is it going to be liable for unemployment? Um, so by providing this item in the budget, um, it reduces, it extends the duration by which you can have the person employed another grant. So I want to say it was 11 to 12 weeks, but I can get to that exact number. So $10,000 for 12 weeks? It's yeah. three months. Yeah. I think so. So I, I, have, I have the same question. Um, so it does come out to $157,000, $157. The grant writer, though, under the salaries ordinance is listed as 36593 but the difference between the salaries and planning the grant writer is not in my department. It's 26371 Yeah, the grant writer is So then who is this correlation? Grant written other cap. So that's the principal plan. Jonathan Scott. Okay. Why is it the principal planner's salary listed under our salary in the department? If that's grant funded. So it should be the director, the assistant director, and the business outreach. And then the rest of it is going to go to the community development. Because their grant is running out? No, no. community development is annual. It's grant funded. That, that's, that's not included in salary. So during the receivership, um, there was a million dollars approximately in uh, grant restricted uh, funds discovered. Um, so that money was reallocated with the Office of Housing and Community Development, and they provided some administrative dollars for the city to hire a staff person. Right. So that's not included in this equation. So you're right. Director, assistant director. Uh, business outreach, and, business outreach and the last remaining portion of the principal plan is what makes up the 183.528. Right. Why isn't that person, though, in the ordinance of the salaries and department heads and others in an unclassified service? Uh, I'll bring that up to Len as to whether, or maybe legalize whether they are considered a classified employee, considered yeah. They're predominantly grant funded. So, principal planner, grant funded primarily, runs out 
a quarter left, um, which we are covering the remainder for. Why is that not the question? Is, not on the, uh, why is that not included in the uh, department heads and unclassified service? Is it because was the rationale because it's primarily grant funded? Primarily grant funded. funded. Yeah. I, I have to go look at my notes of why I decided that. Yeah. I don't know who decided that, honestly. Yeah. So yeah, because I was going to say, is it twenty six thousand three hundred seventy million? It is twenty six. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The rest is the, the there's a caller impact for the three people, and then you yeah, know, it's, like this, the it's, it's actually four months I budgeted um, to be conservative. So there's four months of covering mm -hmm. that person. All right. Can we, can we check as to grand. why they're not listed under the salaries later? They're in the budget. I will update you. I can update the ordinance. To talk, I'll talk to Matt and as, long, as long as that, yeah, we can update okay. the ordinance. I have, well, I'll share later. I have to update this ordinance anyway. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay. So the question is whether they should be included into the... Yeah, yeah. Okay long, so, so the, the grant expires when? It, it's sometime in Q3, so sometime to January or March, so I did, at the time I didn't know the exact date, so I put in four months yeah. in the budget. So this person, it might be three months, it might be five months. Sorry. Yeah, because I was going to say, this person that makes well over $100,000. No, he's salaried at $48,000 right now. Yeah. So we're budgeting more than half the salary, though. We're budgeting a little, we're budgeting like almost a half a salary right now. But don't forget, it's not just the salary, it's the fringe, it's the medical. It's, so we, it's when, the, when, pen, I mean, not medical, pension. Yeah, when the grant expires, medical. we become liable for all the benefits that he has through the grant? No. The, the principal planner was hired as a temporary grant funded employee. <clears throat> when the, the, so the expectation that I've worked out with the finance department and HR is that when the funds run out, um, that person is laid off, their job no longer exists, and we budget accordingly so that we can make sure that we have enough in the grant to cover any unemployment benefits or other post-employment benefits necessary. Was that to convince the person to work for us? Was that like a, a sweet in the deal arrangement for the person? No, that's to ensure that there's no financial liability to exceed. But why would we be financially liable for a grant? That's not what I'm just saying. Like, what's the legal opinion? Like, if this person has a job through a grant and their grant runs out, why would we be liable for their insurance well, or unemployment or anything? Well, because they're an employee of the city. They may be ended, but you have to lay them off because there's no more funding, and then they can apply for unemployment. So, in other words, it works just the same as if someone was getting paid by the city from city funds. No matter if it's a grant or not, if the money runs out and we can no longer afford to pay the person, then that's, again, the person would be terminated, but it would be the city's responsibility to pay that person's unemployment. Because they have a work history, it doesn't matter where they work, they look at the last two years of work history to determine whether or not they'll be able to get some employment. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> Logic wise, yeah. but I, I know the rules. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I agree with. So, so, so hold on, look at this. So, this 26000 is. To keep them on so that we don't have to incur these other costs potentially and then reassess. I mean, that's part of it. I think that um, there's a clearly demonstrated need to right. have planning activities with my department. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, at least until um, the city gets to its comprehensive plan update, it's important to have a principal planner. Right. That gets paid 48000 to work part time. They're full time employee. Oh, they're full time. And they can pay forty eight thousand now through the rent, roughly. Okay. We're budgeting twenty six. And I put in a chunk load to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How many uh, people and how often uh, is the education and training taken? Uh, who who takes this training? So that that funding is. Available for professional development for myself and my staff. Everyone in the department. I thought we had only two and before. Two or three. Oh, you don't know. Okay. How often they take it? It's pretty. It's pretty frequent. Um, it, this 
my department is, um, I would say, the department that's most active um, outside of its, of its core <coughs> functions under the office. So Thank we're you. frequently um, at regional events representing the students at the falls and um, learning new things about best planning practices. Yeah. Um, also, uh, before you mention that uh, we have high investment on city parks, which we can do. I thought that was great. So that, um, there is Veterans Memorial Park at, uh, on Street. The fitness park, uh, we're Crosswind. renovating Crosswind Park for the dog park that was installed at Sacred Heart Park. The dog park. We made some investments last year in Jenks Park. And uh, there's some potentially restricted funding um, associated with Higginson Avenue Sports Complex. Um, so I've been working with Parks and Recreation on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pat. Okay. I want to give you a to think about the regular cost of the also, I'm about the equation, the employee that is employed through a, through a grant, yeah. uh, which is 48000 And then when the grant ended, they, we have to give them a uh, layoff <clears throat> so they can collect the benefit, right? And we are responsible for that, for that unemployment benefit. How much uh, money is that? What is the responsibility we have so the, to cover that? The AFO and I budget, budgeted that as part of um, Making an offer to the principal planner, um, and I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen thousand dollars. How much? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. That we that totally we pulled to fifteen thousand dollars out of the grant, so we have a, you know we have enough money um, to theoretically keep this person employed until next spring. But if we were going to be laying them off, um, we would be potentially required to pay unemployment benefits if they didn't quickly find a new job. So they would have to be laid off in November. Um, and then there would, may or may not be some funds left um, within the grant um, that would be very difficult to spend. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Josh, most of my questions relate to projects. And those are unpredictable expenses that are not really budgeted here. They're budgeted through grants. And that's why I'm requesting, again, Josh, a breakdown of uh, grants, funds, CDBG, uh, breakdown on the different projects, what our expenses are, what are our future expenses for those there are so many expenses that you already you already expended now. What do you foresee uh, expenses in some of these projects uh, starting in July 1st? Uh, especially since we don't have an <clears throat> allocation from CDBG funds. Uh, uh, again, Josh, a three-year history, which I'll look for the breakdown that uh, you say was in the envelope. I'll take a look at it. I don't want to keep you here longer. I don't want you to contaminate anybody else. <coughs> so I'm not going to ask you any more questions. Okay. Next time I will. Marissa, mm -hmm. well thank you, Peter. And uh, as everybody echoes, get well, you too, Josh. Was that, did we go around three times? Uh, I think that was two, but it was three. I think that was three. Two. It was two. Around two. Around two. Around two. Can I start as a numbers person. I'm also it's just a clarification. So now, all the directors will be present next week during the public hearing. So we can request that up to you. Yeah. Sure, but the directors are not to be participating in the public hearing. They right. could be here, but you know, if someone comes up and says, right. you know, I want to answer on, that that those sort of things have to they can be requested by any one of you. Um, however you want, whether it's a phone call, meeting, writing, whatever. Um, but it's not the directors aren't to participate in that public hearing. Right. Right. They, they they interact with you. How is right. Mr. Chairman? 
how are the public questions going to be answered? They are to be consolidated by you as the council people and directed in whatever manner you like. You can set up a meeting, you can so we will have a uh, phone call, you can... I, so I, I would say it would be my have recommendation the to ask them to be here so they can hear the questions even if they don't have the answers. We'll consolidate them and create a space for that. Down. But just to give them, you know, I think it's also a fair heads up, unless I mean, you can also sit down and take them. That's, yeah. that's a fair one. I, I, uh, no, that's a fair one. I, I, think I, I believe that the financial people will be uh, a acting finance director uh, Len, so we have the, uh, those are the people you want here. Is Len the acting finance director? No. no. no I I called her that. She would be here. Mr. Chairman. So, look at project. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, before we adjourn, uh, we haven't heard from the mayor. I have questions. I've requested him to appear for the last couple of months, but this is his budget. There are things in this budget that I'd like to question. I would request that we hear from the mayor, public safety director. So, whenever he can schedule it, Mr. Chairman, uh, there are questions that I wish to ask. And of him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Motion. Motion by Secretary Rivera. Second by Councilman Smile. I'll just stand here at 837. 8.37. Thank you. Thanks again for your time, everyone. Thank you. So we can sign it? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Can I sign it? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Ready to live.